Here's the first video in the new studio and the first unboxing of the new Shade Spire. So let's very gently cut the tab there and let's have a good old look. So we've got two sprues of plastic models including one very large base which I imagine is for the flesh hand. We've got an instruction booklet, again, which goes through exactly what you need to do to put everybody together. Let's see if there's any obvious sub-assemblies. Cloak on Magrol might be a little hard to reach the back. These guys are both absolutely fine, as is the flesh hand. So, the only sub-assembly I'd consider would be this, uh, so that you can do things like get to the mouth inside his stomach. But looking at it, you probably want to assemble him completely because you've got the skull joining together here and you've got the shoulder pads coming together here. You're just going to have to be clever with the mouth and clever with the back of the cloak. So looking at that, very nice. We've got two decks of cards. We've got the specifically uh, Fiends cards and we've got the generic cards. So, I imagine these have been done to death already, but let's have a quick look. This is the bit where I struggle with the plastic on cards, as I have in every other video, so it's nice to know some things don't change. Okay, so, stats. Uninspired, who has knocked back one, hits on hammers. Gorefist, ah, so Gorefists on these guys, any attack against these guys that misses, they get to make this attack action. And if any of your attack actions succeed, then you inspire. Well, not all of them. So these guys, if you attack them, miss, they come back at you, they're on one dice, but that's still one sword, one crit. That's one in three chance, then they'll inspire and cause more damage on you. Rip tooth, three dice, swords, two damage. Magor, cleave, so he goes through shields. Two axes, two damage. So, four, 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 movement three on the warriors, four on rip tooth. Shields on the warriors, dodge on rip tooth. So, let's have a look at inspired. Suddenly, three damage, three damage, two damage, and two damage. So these basically stay the same. They get an extra dice in attack. And on the gore fists, you're rolling three dice, doing three damage, but any crit goes through armor, and they jump to movement five. And then four, four, four. Let's have a real good look at the models. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit with the camera to get a good look at the sprue. Right, so let's have a look at these guys. You've got three on 32 mil bases. You've got one on, I think that's 50 mil base. So Riptooth is a big impressive model, but still only one, two, three, four parts and the base. Got a Blood Warrior here, three parts of the base. Champion is one, two, three, four parts of the base. And another Blood Warrior is two parts of the base. So not that complicated to put together, and it's only four bottles. Looking at the detailing, you've got this belly mouth with tonsils. You've got this orc skull here that's two parts, joining the hand and the leg. You've got Lots of chain mail that's very well done because it's all digitally sculpted. You've got some very nice, uh, this guy's got little horns on his head. You've got some nice corn symbols, the spikes, there's a lot of spikes. Rip tooth has got some nice skin detail. Again, you've got hair, you've got skulls all over the place looks really nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these all off the sprue 
clean them up and get them ready for assembly. So I'll be back with you in a minute. With the model separate from the sprue and cleaned of the mould lines, I'm ready to start assembling them. I will of course again be using Tamiya uh, cement. This is the thin version. Uh, these models are snap fit. You can just push them together and then put them in the base. However, I like to glue them because it gives you a much more solid joint. So, first of all, I take a quick look and see how it's going to fit together. So, this. Yeah. Looking at this, there's going to be some issues with the. Pegs. Let's see if that's solved by scooping those out a little with the knife. Yeah, and it starts to go together. So I'm then going to use a little bit of this, and then a little bit round the joint area. And then slide them all the way on and push them in quite hard. So, means you've got no joints on the shoulder pads, so they are flush. You can push them in hard to get that result, and you've got no obvious joint down here. And then in a minute. When that's done, line the pegs up like so, and then dab a glue on each of the pegs, softens them up a little bit, and lets you just pop this guy into place. So that's the first model assembled, uh, who is Gartok. We'll move on to the next guy, who is Zarkus and is three pieces. You've got a shoulder pad comes across the chest like this and you've got this axe coming across the back like this. So quick test fit. Again I'm gonna wind the hole a little bit. When you put the spit on the pegs that will widen them out, but widen the hole a little bit isn't going to hurt. So then, dab a bit of glue on there, and a bit around the joint, and then I line up and slide this arm in like this. Make sure that it is flush here by pushing it in quite hard. While I'm doing that, let's a little there. And then I pop this in here. And then I push that in. So you can see where the breastplate lines up because the breastplate is divided into two pieces and you can see where the back plates line up. So then the next bit we've got this side peg here. Let's see how that lines up. So it's going to go like this. So again It's done. This is definitely improvement over sake. Get the blood bound set. Because it tells you exactly where the foot needs to go. So there is Zarkus. We've now got the four piece uh, maggle. 
So again, I'll look at how he's going to go together. And it's basically everything except the front of the body goes on first. So that snaps in like that. You can see the little bit of fluff there pops right out. So we pop that in again. Bang, that's in. Find the hole for the axe, which is here. Again. Dig that out a little bit in the shoulder. Let's look at how that should go. So I can't help but feel that's how that should go. Stick it well out to the side. This I think you've got to be quite careful of because you need to not get it wrong because the front of the body here is going to go on like this. And again, you need to widen the hole a little bit. Then try attaching him again. And with that hole widened, he goes straight in there. So, because I think the issue is getting the axe into place. So, and again, you've got another plug with the skull that he's carrying. So you pop that old, you pop that old skull together. And you press that in as hard as you can. And then you line up the arm because he's going to go like that. However, I'm going to smooth down that arm peg a little in order to get him in. So we pop this in here. There we go. See? No gap. And then again, you are nice. Yeah, and again, I with the bases. A bit of glue it means it'll go straight in. There we go. So that's Magor completed. Rip Tooth is the final model. So I've seen a lot of Rip Tooths assembled uh, with a great big join down the middle. So I'm going to start with the body. Again, I think a little bit of widening of so. I've now got a simple rip tooth, who is another four-part model. I've seen a lot of issues with the assembly of rip tooth mainly by the line down the middle of the head. So we'll see if we can eliminate that completely. If not, I've got some 
liquid green stuff to hand to get rid of that line. Again, bit of work to get the peg holes a little wider so that he just slips on. So then a little bit of plastic glue. A little bit of plastic glue up on this joint. A little bit there. And then I start sliding this guy together. Push it in quite hard. And the joint disappears. So that's the first bit of the body. And then yeah there's a bird right outside. So then this goes on here like this and you can see the tongue come out. So you push that on, like so. I think the issue is then you're going to need a bit of plastic glue along here. Because you've got the second part of Riptooth's head. So you can see that peg hole. Straight away you can see that gap and how pronounced it is. So a little bit of green stuff isn't enough to cut it. We've got to get a bit more. Sorry, a little bit of plastic glue isn't enough to cut it. We're going to need a bit more. Again, putting them on the base, you can see where the feet go together. So those partial feet go there. So again, soften the peg a bit. And provide a good three points of contact for him when he's assembled. Like so. So I'm just very happy that they've done a plastic flesh hound. Look at him. He is beautiful. However, you're going to need to apply a little bit of liquid green stuff to him to get rid of those joint lines. So get a knife. stuff and you can see smooth knot in there when it's dry should deal with that issue Don't be afraid of putting a bit too much on because what you can do when he's dry is just scrape away the excess. But you've got a little bit of a join down here as well. So you need to fill in the main a little bit. But also, I should have done this first. Get rid of most of the polystyrene cement on here. And then run some down there. And then push that together. 
and see if that bonds, thus eliminating the need for liquid green stuff. So you can see these models need a little bit of work, but it's mainly just rip tooth. Everything else is beautifully put together. So let's have a look at each in turn. You've got a champion, two blood warriors. You've got a flesh hound. The flesh hound is a big and impressive model. Well worth. But let's zoom out so you can see them in their majesty. You've got three really good infantry and a little monster who looks real nice. And I'll be quite looking forward to painting up. You've got sort of skull and lava themed base here. You could do this as standard stone, you could do this as lava, you could do this as the geological layer of skulls that underlie the Warhammer world. You've got a bone axe here, he's holding a bone, he's got a demonic boar on his stomach. You've got more standard axe weapons here uh, with the little gore fists which are lovely little bits of kit. There are going to be loads of red armour if you want to do it red and you don't want to do it black because you could do it black with gold highlights and that would look really good and that's giving me an idea for the scheme because the bone and the flesh will contrast real nice as will the chain mail with stark black metallic armour. Ooh, I think we'll go with that. So, from that I'll be black undercoating these guys with spray paint and I'll be coming back and showing you how I paint them. If you've liked this video hit like or subscribe, I know it's quite long, but it's the first video in my new studio which as you can tell is in the shed, hence the sound of birds outside. Uh, but if you've liked it hit like or subscribe, if you feel strongly leave a comment, otherwise good gaming.